What's going on YouTube? Dave Bay from Bay Films Media back with another video. In today's video, we are going to be comparing the Disaster Group router versus the live view solo and we're specifically talking about their cellular bonding capabilities so we're going to briefly do an overview on both devices and then we're going to talk about uh their similarities the differences some pros and cons and what i'll be doing moving forward Let's start with what these devices do. Both these devices offer the ability to bind multiple cellular data together. And starting with the LiveView Solo, the particular brand uh, package that I have is the version that comes with uh, AT&T and Verizon SIM cards inside each of these dongles. And what binding does is it takes these two bind them together into one strong internet to give you a more stable, secure connection and offering redundancy. If one was to drop off or one was a bad signal or not really getting good. Another thing this is able to do is not only can you bind just these two, you can also add a Wi-Fi signal to this as well as a landline and you can bind all four together, giving you even more redundancy and bandwidth. And then the disaster group, same principle with the disaster group, except the disaster group has three uh, SIM cards enter inside here, um, and that's AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. And it also has an uh, Ethernet port where you can also add a fourth connection to bind all four. Um, and uh, I didn't get a chance to test it out yet, but it also has a USB here where you can actually connect a hotspot or a tether or phone to even add an, an additional uh, service to bind. But I, that's not verified and I still have to check it, but potentially has five, um, but it definitely has four. So they both have four. So let's talk about their similarities. Okay, so similarly, they both combine up to four internet sources, maybe five on the disaster group. Um, they offer a, a portable design so that you can take it on set and to be able to be out in the field and able to get uh, to, to make sure you have internet connection. I use these devices for live streaming, so these are great for live streamers because we know that when you go to venues, some venues may not have a reliable internet connection, if some at all. Or if they do have an internet connection, it may only be Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi is not reliable. So um, in the cases when you're uh, out in the field and you don't have access to an Ethernet port for secure internet access, having a unit that can bind multiple cellular data together is key. When you're in crowded spaces or in remote locations or just different locations, sometimes you only have one carrier. If it was just AT&T, it may not be the best signal you're getting or it may be a congested field. But when you have three or more and you can bind them together, you know you're gonna at least guarantee the best possible internet in any situation. The differences, these have some very big differences. Let's start with the price difference. The LiveView Solo is more expensive. I'm gonna speak on, you can probably find these things cheaper on sale now from when I first purchased it, but originally I purchased for about $1,500. Um, and with that, you get the actual unit and everything with it. But then you have to pay an additional $400 a year for their bonding service. And the bonding service is, is the technology which binds the multiple seller to data together. And that's a yearly purchase of $400. But then there's an additional fee of another $250 per month to actually have unlimited, untethered data coming from both of these platforms. Now, in the disaster group, this unit itself costs about $800. And then you also have to pay the cloud service per year, which is that $400, which is similar to the LiveView Solo. But there is no other additional fee because that $400 includes two gigs of data per month. Now, if you go over those two gigs per data per month, it's about $8 per gig. For each additional gig, you go over the two gigs. Now, that can add up. Um, versus unlimited, but depending on your usage, you'll quickly see which one is more affordable depending on your workload and how much you want to stream. For me, it's a lot easier to deal with the two gigs per month and just pay that $400 a year because we may not be live streaming so much uh, to, to justify paying the $200 a month with LiveView Solo. Now, I will say the LiveView Solo is prepaid, so you don't have to pay per month. You can pay per month and you know turn it off and call it back on, but it's a very clunky system. You have to like call them, activate it, deactivate it, and you probably wanna do it a few days before an event so that you make sure your connection is actually connected. But with, when you're, but when, with this only being $8, 
per additional gig, it's easy to pass that cost off to your client. And it's simple math to try to figure out how much data you're going to be using based on your live stream format. If it's 720, 1080, or 4K versus how many hours. Once you figure that formula out, you can easily just pass that cost on to the client, which is very still very affordable even compared to the uh pop-up wi-fi i've used that once before and the pop-up wi-fi is really great but i actually think this is very similar to the pop-up wi-fi the technology and what they're doing is very similar this is so much cheaper okay pros and cons pros and cons so again pros you can bind uh, multiple internet connections, very portable. Uh, it doesn't have to be plugged in to be charged. It has a, not sure how many million batteries it has, but you probably can get about one or two hours live streaming without having to charge it. But you can also, of course, still plug it up and let it run and it'll charge while it's running. Um, this only, I would say a con for what I use it for is this is an encoder. So this doesn't produce its own Wi-Fi. It, you're not able to connect to this and surf the internet. You're not able to send this feed to a computer or a laptop. You have to run your video feed directly through this device because it's an encoder. So it has one HDMI input that you can plug your camera directly into and whatever, and use the portal online to set up the destination is going to go to like Facebook, YouTube, or a custom RTMP. And it'll stream directly to that with a push of a button. You can set everything up and just push pressure live stream or you can go live stream from the portal online. Um, or what I do is I connect this up to my switcher, which gives, I send the output from my switcher to this, which gives me the ability to have multiple cameras instead, instead of just one. So pro is very mobile. Um, if you just need a one camera set up, you can plug your camera directly to the live stream to the internet. So it's cool. That's plus. But the only con is that you can only send it to RTMP protocol, which means you can't use this for conferencing apps like Zoom, Skype, or Teams. Since majority of the live streams that I do are via Zoom, Skype, and Teams, I'm able to use this so therefore having this doesn't help me for those type of live streams pros and cons with the disaster group pros this you can connect to your computers and other mobile devices via wi-fi because they include this with a wi-fi adapter that you can plug into the back on the usb-c3 and you can just plug it directly to your device or computer from ethernet port so i can run this directly into an encoder like the atom mini and stream directly or i can still connect to a computer and use a web conferencing app. This has all three AT&T Verizon already built in, opposed to just two with Lobby Solo. Um, now I do have a 5G Wi-Fi hotspot from T-Mobile that I have it using uh, the Nightgear NetHawk M5. So I'm able to take that, plug it directly into this and actually give me four binded services. I can still use that also for the, the Lobby Solo as well. Oh. Quick, another pro. This can connect to a Wi-Fi source as well, where the Zast Group can't connect a Wi-Fi source to this to bind to the internet. You can only connect directly through Ethernet port. So you can still use a Wi-Fi device like my Nightheart M5 because it's a Wi-Fi device, but since it has an Ethernet port on it, I'm able to send that feed directly into here. So uh, I guess a con would be that is not as portable as the live view solo it's still portable but not as portable it doesn't have a built-in battery so it has to be powered it has to have a power source to it at all times to work but a good thing is it does have power with ethernet so you can power it with an ethernet cable to your different devices that you have and it's also rack mounted so you can you know build this into some kind of portable rack um system you know or you can sit on the tabletop it does both this comes with a carrying case that's a pro so that's it's always good to buy devices or gear and already comes with a case you don't have to uh, find a case for it. And now it uses a simple Harbor Freight case. So I actually purchased a Harbor Freight case for my LiveView Solo and just plucked out the foam and was able to fit that. So it was no big deal as far as transporting it. But coming with a carrying case is a pro. So in closing, moving forward, I will be using the Disaster Group for its flexibility, for being able to send off his own Wi-Fi and it's more cost effective than a live view solo. So that's the end for this video. I just kind of want to make a quick video on this because when I went to purchase it, there was not really much information on internet and it wasn't a single video on YouTube at the time of me recording this. Hopefully you find this helpful if you're trying to decide on rather getting the um, disaster group and what it's capable of. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. This helps my channel out. See you in my next video.